Good morning, Ted. Elmer, good morning. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, I'm doing, uh, actually, I'm doing well also. Uh, this is an active time for all of us, but um, net, net, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Yeah. So, so where are you right now? Right now, I'm in Florida. Um, I came down here actually uh, yesterday. Uh, my kids have been down here for uh, almost three weeks now, and I just decided I wanted to, uh, once everything, we kind of got the, plan, the plans put in place at the various businesses to come down and uh, spend some time with them for a week. It's 86 down here, so I thought, uh, I just talked to my wife in Milwaukee, it's, it's uh, 33 there, so right now I'm in uh, a better place, at least climate-wise, and overall I'm in a, a good place we all are. Thanks for asking. 86 doesn't sound too bad right now. That uh, we could good. stand for some of that. We've got the sun, but we don't have the temperature. So, as you know, we've been having conversations with GMC members about the impact of the shutdown and coronavirus on life, on business, on family, and everything else. So, you know, I know that you wear so many hats. Can you give me a, a sense of what you're seeing in in relation to the shutdown and its impact on uh, fiduciaries? portfolio on your real estate business as well as your private equity business? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, let, let's take them in, in segments. In the real estate business, um, we have uh, right now all, about 9,000 apartments uh, with about 15,000 people. So the immediate concern <clears throat> when uh, COVID-19 hit was make, making sure that the people in the apartments and also our almost 400 employees were all, all safe. Um, the news on that front is, is good. Uh, I think we've only had <clears throat> a couple of people within the apartments that have tested positive in the uh, Milwaukee metro area for COVID-19. Um, those have been dealt with and they're all doing fine. Uh, secondarily, we need to have those apartments running smoothly to, to take care of the, the tenants, uh, to keep them safe, to keep uh, the ongoing maintenance uh, up to date and happily um, that is going extremely well. Uh, I think most of our tenants, uh, if I look across the spectrum of our, uh, uh, our renters, um, you can kind of segment it. Uh, some of the blue collar folks have been laid off in, in a few of the properties that we have. But uh, overall, when they've reached out to us, we've worked with them to, uh, to get a rental payment uh, plan to extend it. Um, and that of, of 9,000 apartments, that's only happened uh, in less than 100 cases thus far. I expect if we get this, which we will, into May, We'll have to work with a few more people, but overall, I would say I'm very pleased with what's, what's happened. Uh, the folks are safe, and then as important is to make sure our employees are safe. And uh, so far, in a tough environment, and if you go across the spectrum of industries, uh, particularly in real estate, I think uh, we're probably in as, as good a shape as anybody. Um, uh, while we were seeing some dislocations, they're not major at this point, and uh, things are going smoothly. Uh, fiduciary management, um, I talk to Pat English, who's uh, uh, running that day-to-day -day now. Uh, we are considered an essential industry. Um, we do have a few people in there uh, practicing, obviously, social distancing, but we have to have some people on site. We have 28 people at fiduciary management, um, and we're probably op operating each day with anywhere from 8 to 12 and rotating. Uh, so that's going, uh, that's going well also. As it pertains to uh, the private equity side uh, with Lakeview Equity, with uh, Kent Beldy and uh, the other partners that I have there, and also doing uh, private equity with uh, Paul Sweeney, um, we probably have a total of almost 20 companies there. And they're working with obviously the CARES Act and the PPP to make sure the companies are continuing uh, to operate as best they can. There's several of them that are considered essential industries. So uh, the workforces are, are, uh, we've modified them somewhat, but they continue to, to operate. So I would, I would summarize it in, in, in a difficult environment for everybody. Um, I feel pretty darn good about where we are across the spectrum of companies that I'm involved with. Uh, I suspect that it will be a little more difficult uh, to, if the uh, safe in place orders are put in place beyond the end of this month. But right now, uh, the teams are doing a terrific job. The leaders of the companies are doing a terrific job, and I think we're, we're navigating what's a difficult environment, Elmer, probably as, as best that we can. And that's a tribute to the people you, you have. I think with any business, 
you find out uh, what kind of team you have when you experience something like this. We've never experienced something like this, but we've gone through, obviously, in my business career, uh, with, the, with the Great Recession is, was uh, a tough time. Uh, I can go back over 50 years of investing and finding four or five others. Each one's unique, but you really tell uh, what kind of people you have when, they, uh, when you get into one of these environments. And I can say uh, unequivocally, we've got a great team across all, all spectrums of the businesses I'm involved with. So, you know, Ted, a lot of your career has been based on uh, a really strong capacity for making good predictions about what's going to happen. What's your sense of, you know, the next two years, three years, and, and the impact it will have specifically on Milwaukee? We had been in the middle of a, a development boom. What do you think is going to happen? Well, Elmer, by, by nature, I'm an optimist. Um, I, I would say, I think I would segment that, uh, that the answer to that question um, thusly. You know, the first thing and the most important thing is to make sure that we keep everybody in every uh, industry, no matter what, safe and healthy and we get through this, the, the COVID-19 issue. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. What's going on in Milwaukee, there's so many exciting things in, in the Milwaukee area in the next 12 months. And, and um, I, we don't like to see what happens uh, occur as it has. But I would say this, I think uh, the first thing is we've got to get through the medical issue and we have to listen to the experts in that regard because um, it's important that we keep people safe. But then it is important in conjunction with that, that we start to get this, this state, this city and this country back, back to work. And we do it in a safe manner. And I think we'll open up, uh, we'll open up certain companies, certain industries in a kind of a shotgun approach in that we'll start to where we know we can do it in a safe manner and slowly get things back to work. Uh, the dislocation right now is, is difficult, right, and I think it's going to be driven by what happens, obviously, um, with the flattening and hopefully soon uh, decline in uh, the rate of incidence of COVID-19. Uh, but then I think if you look, at, uh, so that short-term issue is going to be driven by the medical side. But we will come out of this. I mean, in my 50-year investment career, I was saying the other day on an interview I did, this is the sixth one. And each one is different. You can't predict the short term. This one is, as I say, going to be driven more by, by the medicines and by finding the vaccine that we can all feel comfortable with. Uh, I was talking the other day about I went through the polio. Uh, I'm old enough to remember what happened with polio. My brother uh, contracted polio. That was very difficult because it took a long time to get that vaccine. My sense is today with science and technology, a vaccine will, will happen sooner rather than later so that we can all feel safe. Um, and then the long term, I think a year or two from now, I think there will be a different normal, but we will get back to as normal uh, an, a normal and what things were like as we can. That's human nature. I mean, we are uh, we like to uh, interact with people, and we'll get back to a normal. Uh, I think a normal environment, whatever that is, with some modifications in a year or two, and sh and in a year or two, I think that we'll be back to uh, a, a good place and I think things will be going and moving ahead well. I, I don't know how, how we'll come out of this. Uh, people talk, the economists talk about a V-shape, U-shape. I think it'll be a little slower recovery, but I think 12 months from now, we'll be on a good path and uh, things will be getting back to, uh, to the new normal. So Ted, it strikes me that one of the things that you do is you uh, work on companies and businesses from the board level, from an owner's perspective. You know, this is a different time when we, we can't go into the office. We, we, we have to change our communication styles. How are you connecting with your owners, your executives? How are you staying in touch? Well, I'm learning how to Zoom. <laughs> <Let's> say, <laughs> uh, a month ago, Elmer, I knew of Zoom, but I've probably done, um, i probably done 20 Zoom, uh, I don't know if you call these podcasts or interviews, uh, in, the last, in the last four weeks. So um, much of it is done by, uh, by Zoom technology, uh, Facebook on, in, in many cases, uh, teleconferencing. Uh, in a couple of cases where it's necessary, we've gotten two or three or four of us with proper social uh, distancing together. Um, so it's been much more uh, technology related, such as this interview. Uh, and our discussion um, b because it, it allows uh, a very safe environment. So 
But I, I, I would say the communications, though, however they are, telephone, Zoom, Facebook, uh, conference calls, the, tel the connection uh, and interaction continues to be really be quite good and quite responsive. So in, in, in terms of, of uh, keeping things moving as best we can in this environment, uh, because of the technology we all have today, it's, it's, it's gone quite well. So life is disrupted for all of us. Can I ask you personally, what's the thing that you're most looking forward to returning to something like normal? Well, I like, I like people. I'm a, uh, because I've been around and in the world, the world of uh, the business world and the investment world for so long, I'm a people person. I'm a creature of habit. I like the interaction. I, you know, with the, my, my grandkids are, are down here and they're doing everything uh, online and, and they're very comfortable doing that. And I've grown more comfortable doing that, but I'm, I like to interact with people. I, I like, um, I, I, I just like to have that interaction. I get, I get a better sense of how people are reacting to what I'm saying uh, or what they're saying via their body language. And I just, I just like the interaction of uh, uh, a social interaction of dealing, dealing with folks. So I'm really looking forward to that and I uh, my life has really been not disrupted that much it's changed um, but I need to get back uh, into that interactive world and, and engaging with people face to face I, I like that uh, but so so Zoom for now I'm going real well with what we're with, with what we're dealing with and how we're dealing with it well that's great news so here you are you've got uh, a, a platform to speak directly to your GMC uh, member peers you know, what's the thing that you would want them to know about uh, sticking through this and, and coming out the other side as successfully as possible? Well, I mean, I, I, I know so many of the GMC members and so many of the people in the business community. And, and, and my message, uh, as I said a few minutes ago, I'm, I t I'm optimistic by nature. Um, and human beings are uh, creatures that are very adaptive. And I think the people that I know, particularly at the GMC, in the Milwaukee business community, um, they're they're creative people. They're uh, very um, responsive to whatever the issues, the problems, or the opportunities. And I think uh, my belief is, and strong belief is, that uh, everybody that I've talked to is navigating a difficult in situation very well. Their priorities. Uh, I'm I'm very impressed with as I talk to uh, the businesses I'm involved with, my fellow. Uh, business associates, the priorities are in place. Take care of your people, take care of your customers, keep people healthy, and then in the proper manner, uh, let's get this let's get this city, this country, this state back to functioning uh, in what the new normal is. And the people I've dealt with throughout the last four weeks, five weeks of this are also very optimistic and they're excited about uh, what the prospects are. They feel as I do, uh, with a 50-year business career under my belt, and hopefully a few more, many, maybe many more, um, that we'll come out of it. We'll come out of it stronger, better. We'll come out of it wiser because we will learn, have learned a lot of things through this that will benefit us for the next 5, 10, 15 years. Um, and uh, uh, we'll get back to, to pros prosperous times and a prosperous environment. So, uh, And the people, as they say, that I've talked with and dealt with, have that attitude and uh, are, are executing plans uh, very well in a tough environment. So Ted, I'm gonna switch gears for a second. There's mm -hmm. this thing that we all know about you, uh, which is that you're a huge music lover. So right. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to tell us what, what have you been listening to as uh, you know, your everything is different around us and and you're you're going down to florida you're going to be with your kids and, and your family what's what's on the playlist right now on my playlist yeah well uh you're absolutely right i'm a music lover and i'm uh i'm excited for the new summer fest this fall to, to start this that question with i mean uh working with don and uh howard the current uh chairman of the board you know there again uh, the Milwaukee World Festival team uh, is adapting to a changed environment. I'm excited now with, the, with, with Smiley and with Babish and the team 
we'll have uh, the uh, Summerfest for three weekends, as you know, in September. And I know how good they are, that team, and I know that we'll put, put on a very good event with a lot of terrific music. As to what I'm listening to, I mean, I love, um, given my age, Elmer, I, uh, I really enjoy uh, some of the classic rock, some of the uh, oldies. I enjoy listening to uh, one of my favorite artists uh, today, uh, Lady Gaga. When I go, I, I'm working out, by the way, every day. I, I've been pretty good about workouts my whole life, maybe four, four a week. Today, right now, I'm working out seven days a week. I get on my bike. Wow. I listen to uh, uh, music from, uh, well, as I said, Lady Gaga. I love Tina Turner. I love the Rolling Stones, the Eagles. Uh, I, I went and saw uh, and really enjoyed uh, Lizzo's concert last summer. I've listened to a lot of her music. I like country western. So, and I, and I, I love uh, Broadway musicals. So uh, I've answered, I think, that question by saying I just love music. Uh, I'm not a hard, let me say one thing, I'm not, I'm not a heavy metal. So I don't listen to that, yeah. but I go from country to Broadway to uh, classic music, rock and roll. I just enjoy music. And every time I'm working out, I'm listening to something. So, Ted, I, I think I've had the pleasure of talking to you a couple times. And uh, you never fail to surprise me. And today's surprise was Lady Gaga and Lizzo. Uh, oh, really? I would not have expected <laughs> either of those. Uh, but <laughs> so I'll definitely get a I can throw maybe a few more of their surprises, but we'll leave it at two right now, Elmer. Okay? <laughs> I love it. So you know what I'll invite you to do? I think uh, when we share this video with the GMC members, we should maybe include, you know, Ted's playlist. Um, Ted's quarantine playlist. I think we should make that happen. What do you think? I like that. Everybody that knows me well knows I love music. That's I, for sure. So that would be, I think that, that would be, that'd be a great idea. Elmer. So um, I, I think we should, we should finish on that high note, but I'll give you one chance. If there's anything else that you'd like to share with your, your GMC member peers. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, I, I, the people in the GMC and the people in the business community uh, that I know, and the people in Milwaukee are great people. I mean, I, I will tell you this, one of the things that in my 50-year career, when I go around uh, and talk to people and say I'm from Milwaukee, and people go, oh, Milwaukee, they, they always kind of said it with apologize, I had to live in Milwaukee. But when you travel as much as I do, uh, and you see the quality of people we have, both uh, the work, the workers in Milwaukee, the executives in Milwaukee, the leaders of not for profits, uh, they're a terrific, ter terrific people, and they they have a can-do attitude. I think more so, I would say than any any geographic area. One of the great lines I've used quite a bit was uh, one of George Oliver's lines from uh, uh, Johnson Controls, and one of the things uh, um, that George said to me, which really resonated because it captured how I feel about. Milwaukee and, and living in Milwaukee and being with the people, the Midwestern people that have the values that our, uh, our community has. And the line from George Lee said, one of the most difficult things I have to do is to entice and attract people to Milwaukee. But the most important and difficult thing I have to do is get him to leave Milwaukee. And I think that says it all. I think uh, when you see Milwaukee in the, in the view that you and, and Julia and I have had, and if you have the opportunity to go to other parts uh, of this country and around the world. Milwaukee is a fabulous place. And it, it's a fabulous place because of the quality of the people. So uh, that always leave, leaves me with a good feeling about where I live, where my businesses are, and the people I interact with, and uh, my fellow members of the GMC. Just a first-rate group of people. I could not agree more. Ted, thank you so much for making some time for us this morning. Um, really looking forward to seeing you face-to-face. -face. And until then, keep rocking out. I'll do that, Elmer. Thanks for having me on this. And uh, when we talk next, I'll have some more of my new playlist for you, okay? It's, it's a deal. <laughs> okay. Take care. Thanks. See you soon.